Hi, thank you for tuning in. I'm here with Cecil of Cecil and Company Shingling. <laughs> His Growl. shingles are oh and Growl. Joel. We mainly uh, mainly deal with growl. Later. Um here it says that you you did shingling. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I feel so unprepared. Um so drywall now. That's my brother. Oh. My brother does the drywall. <laughs> now what would you say? I've been working with drywall probably. <laughs> now what would you say to somebody? I've been dealing mainly. Now, if any of you out there are like me, sometimes you get random holes and things in your drywall from different things. Maybe you lost your temper and threw a phone book through it, or maybe you were moving furniture. I, I started dealing mainly, mainly in drywall in the, uh, in the mid '90s. They call that the the drywall boom, boom of '94. The Come boom on. of '94. Now, with your when, uh, experience, there it is. hey, shut up. Okay. When people started to realize that. There really was an art to what I was doing. There's an art. I, uh, there really is an art. And, uh, take for instance, I did the drywall down on the McDonald's at, uh, <laughs> down at exit 17. That McDonald's? It and you know the great. drywall, don't you? Every time I go in that McDonald's, I compliment the drywall. See, the key is. I do. Shut up. I'm talking here. See, the key is. When you get your tape, okay. you got the tape, right? You got to hit them seams just right. And people know, people can say, that's 15 pieces of drywall. You don't want to look like 15 pieces of drywall. You I was just what? so excited to hear someone so passionate about drywall. You really like for it to look like one, one piece. Wow, I didn't know there was an art to it. There well, is. I mean, you just don't want to, you can't just have somebody going there, going there half ass doing a piss poor job. We're taking callers now. Um, one second. I really got to make. I'll get this taken care of. Now we have okay. a little handout card. Sure, no problem. Are you talking about? That was one of our producers, and he wanted me to ask you. Um, I gave him the quote. The New Times and thought about. Oh. I gave him the quote. I told him the price is firm. <laughs> oh. There's been a little miscommunication. Yeah. There's that too. He's trying to rip me off. He was just wondering. Um, he was wondering how much money he could take out of my children's mouth. So I told him not to put money there to begin with. No, he was wondering where you learned the art of drawing. I what he was wondering. He was jacking. Um, you don't understand. I did some work for him before. This is an easy one. He was in a different business. A, bit, a less reputable business. I don't like to talk about my, my customers like that. But, uh, that man, uh, that man ripped me out of seven thousand dollars. That is just absurd, and it's making me question my employment here. Um, if, if I don't want to work for a man who so easily rips people out of seven thousand dollars and takes the food out of your children's mouths, the money out of their mouth. Oh, the money. Sorry. I mean, the same thing. Food, money. It's they're dumb as a box of rocks. I tell you. Your children? <laughs> I love them, but they're stupid. Did you enroll them into school? In what? Did you enroll them into school? I didn't go to school. I didn't need to go to school. My daddy always taught me to. No. I was just wondering if Ain't your children like go to school, though. They go to school, right? No. Okay. Are they just they too to, young? They go, to, they go to school of daddy, tell them what to do. That's my school. I want school when they need. Wow. Um. Listen, I'm not. Wait, wait, just one second. Um, we're about to go. Interview's over. Um. Okay.